AsiaLink is ahead of the game. This organisation is more than 20 years old. The Asia Capable Workforce Strategy is a clear sign both of its maturity and of its enduring, in fact, I think I could say expanding relevance. I want to congratulate Asia Link and the task force especially on the development of this strategy. Its findings are absolutely right. All of us, uh, whether in business, in government or in education and training sectors or indeed anywhere else in the Australian community, have a role to play in building a workforce that's comfortable working and participating in the region. You've advanced the case for thinking about how we advocate the case for an Asia-capable workforce, how we accelerate Asia-focused strategies in Australian business, how we invest, all of us, in developing workforce capability and how we educate Australia's future workforce so that it's ready for whatever this Asian century brings. Despite short-term volatility, a massive opportunity exists for Australia. But it doesn't follow that successfully seizing this prize will happen of its own accord. In fact, how much of the opportunity we grasp really depends on the extent to which we are prepared to ad address a series of critical issues that are hindering our performance and actually holding back our growth potential. We are already seeing some of the competitive challenges that we face play out in the uh, resources sector. But another critical area we have to address is how we increase individual and organizational capabilities to maximize the participation in the Asian century and to compete more effectively for that opportunity in what is now a very globalized world. Based on the survey of, um, of almost 400 Australian businesses, the task force has identified a number of critical individual and organizational competences that are frankly underdeveloped in Australia. And I think they are